After just four weeks of commando training, 924 Troop have been told that they're the worst recruits the instructors have ever seen. Stop pulling your respirators off your face so you can breathe easily. If there was gas all over this fucking area, you wouldn't do it then. You certainly won't fucking do it now. But what's morale like? Shit, this morning, really bad this morning. Yeah. Yet, within seven months, we'll be following some of them to the front line in Afghanistan. If you think you got the fucking attitude to your own fucking routine, you can think again. One day we're going to be in this position, and if we don't carry out what we've been taught, you know, we're going to end up dead. Stacks of aggression, lads. I know it's mega chaggy, I haven't got rounds yet. Contact front. Bang, bang! Bang, bang! Bang, bang, bang! bang. Move! The road to Afghanistan bang. starts here, on Woodbury Common in Devon. Bang, bang, bang! Zigzag, lads. You've got to make yourself a harder target for the enemy. Move! OK, lads. In just their fourth week of training, with 28 still to go, 924 troop haven't even been allowed near a real bullet. Bang! Bang, bang, bang! Bang, 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 bang! OK, what we want is nice big zigzags so that if you're an enemy and you're looking at a bloke, you're actually having to go... Oh, shit. Stay still, will you? OK, cos if you do what you're doing there, both of you, the enemy's just going to be like that. Da-da-da. Yep, bang. OK, dead. The intake started with 50 recruits, but they've been dropping like flies. So here we are, Recruit Lawrence. Goodbye, Recruit Lawrence. Some have been injured, some haven't come up to scratch, and others have just decided it's not for they them. Are. How many have we got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten gone already. It's a classic case of survival of the fittest, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. I mean, to get to the end, you've got to be a certain type of character in here. You've got to have just a willpower to just to crack on, regardless of your thrash, cold, wet, hungry. But fortunately, we lost another one. Who's going to be next? Three, two, one, go. Someone who wanted to leave within hours of arriving on his very first day was Terry John from St Vincent in the Caribbean. Oh, Terry, you've been battered. But after a dramatic change of heart, he seems to be going strong. He did it 26 seconds quicker than you, and Mate. you still ain't finished. Now I realise everything that I, like, was imagining in my life, like, I'd be running with guns and all that, now it's happening to me, so... Just got to bear with it. Well, I'm not one to use it for bad, really, so I'm not really, I'm using it to defend myself and, like, this country's interests abroad and all that, so I'm not really worried. I'm not one to kill innocent people. It's all about protecting. That's what I'm here for. Yeah. So I like it. Yeah. So I'll see you around, Chris. You're OK. OK. Unlike Terry, Jordan Slatter, one of the youngest members of the troop, has never had any doubts. He's dreamed of being a Royal Marine since he was eight years old. Oh, yeah, I'm staying here for the full 32 weeks. Yeah, I'm not going out them gates without a green beret at the end of this. I, yeah, I can't wait. Just crack on with training now. Oh, you slag! Oh, shit! Oh, wanker. Uh, dude! Smash myself in the knee! Oh. Being part of the Royal Navy, Marine recruits have to train as amphibious infantry. That means having to feel confident in the water. One of their main tasks may well be to invade or attack from landing craft coming off warships. All recruits have to take what's called a battle swimming test. And this is done in kit with ammunition pouches and a weapon. This is the first of their criteria tests that must be passed. Failure means they would be out of the troop. 
demoted to a junior troop to retake the test. Good. Now relax. Tread water for two minutes. Treading water in kit is no easy task, as Terry John is finding out. John, stay away from that side. No, stay away from that side. Stay away from that side. Stay away from that side. Grab it. Grab it. Help him, then. OK, right. Calm yourself down now, yes? Wait. Relax. I'll do your buckle. Come on. Come on. Good effort. Pass. Okay, change the scripts again. If you can talk, you're not swallowing water. How was it? I knew I was first. All right, in the end. Yeah. I knew I could do it. I was, wasn't afraid. You can't be afraid. I won't make it. It's all right, fast it. I was put in a non swimmer. Not non swimmers, but. Weak swimmers, yeah. but I I could actually swim. I would pass my battle swimming test, but I'd rather be in the um, weak swimmers right now. That's just lazy, it's <laughs> My my bones, right? No, bones are lazy. No, our bones are um what you call it? Dense. More denser than yours. Yeah. <laughs> Not more denser, but denser. Does that count with your brain? Does that count with your brain as well then? Does that count with your brain as well? Hey, you be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> The recruits' day is a long one. Starting at five in the morning, few get to bed before midnight, especially if they have an inspection to prepare for. Well, like, you're up all night, don't get a lot of sleep. Um, get used to it, though, but find it in lectures, everyone going. It's like, that's why they call us nods. Revolution! Revolution! Go on, Williams. Give it to me. Corporal, um, PO 64976 Charlie, recruit Williams of 924 Troop. There are four recruits in room four awaiting your inspection. Good effort. Let's do it. Hmm. Good effort, all right? It's all about being the same, isn't it, lads? Yes, Corporal. Corporal. That's what this is all about, lads. Doing it as a team. Yes, Corporal. All right? One bloke not seeing off the whole troop. Yes, Corporal. Because that's what's happening at the moment. For the it? first six weeks, the recruits, or the nods, have been spending a lot of time being inspected. That's it. All right, good effort, lads. Pack it all away. Cool. From now on, they're going to get more and more into nitty gritty soldiering, in the great outdoors, and in all weathers. You're going to freeze, Terry. You're not used to English weather, mate. I'm going to be sleeping in your sleeping bag. No, you're not. I am. No, you are. No, you're not. I was told to. Anywhere near my sleeping bag. <laughs> I was told to. What, sleep with me? Yeah. No, if I get cold, I was told bag. to sleep this with you. we have to put up with it all day and all night. <laughs> <laughs> At least two, yeah. Oh, if you're dying of hypothermia, I might let you in my sleeping bag. You but might? No, nah, I would let you in. Go to it, Terry. <laughs> and I'll get out. <laughs> <laughs> Hurry up. The day comes when the recruits get to use ammunition for the first time with their SA-80 assault rifles. Not live bullets, but blank ones. Dangerous, nonetheless. As you all know, this is the first time you're going to be using blank, uh, blank rounds in this exercise. There have been numerous accidents over the years with blank rounds. If you fire it towards someone's eye, towards someone's face, towards someone's head, it will kill them. It does have the power to do so. OK, look in now. Corporal Rob will give you a demonstration of what it will do to an egg for approximately 10, 20 centimetres. Right? You know, as we use the egg because apparently it's the same density as a human eyeball, OK? So just imagine this, when you see this egg now, what's going to happen to your eyeball? Okay. What we're going to give you now is a demonstration with a blank firing adapter. So those big yellow things on the end of your weapon on an egg. Fingers. Ears. OK, fellas, as you see there, absolutely no harm to the egg whatsoever. OK, front rank, remove your safety catches. OK, be wary of putting your finger on the trigger, fellas. That's when accidents happen. One round, to your front, fire! OK, five safety catches. OK, ready? Training is now beginning to get more real, more focused on combat. For these young men, Afghanistan okay. is getting nearer and nearer. Fire! So now, on exercise quick cover, three days living in the wild, they must learn about infiltrating enemy positions and the all-important secrets of camouflage. First demo, man. Stand here. Right. First demo, man, there. Right. 
He is too much camouflage. Stacks of it. All right, you think, good effort. No, not really, because you're going to see him walking across the battlefield quite easily, aren't you? If he breaks cover, you're just going to see a big part of the bush get up and move, aren't you? Next demo, ma'am. Right. What, what do you think he is? Too little. Good effort, John, all right? Too little, Cam, all right? You can see the complete shape of his helmet. Yeah, you can see all of the rim, which is the most important part to come out, really. Next demo, ma'am. Right, what do you think he is? Just right. Yeah, it's not too overpowering. He's blended the colours in, colours on his face, all right? Good base of brown, all right? He's broken the rim of his helmet up, hasn't he? Yeah, it doesn't stand out so much. Yeah. Right, during the Falklands operations, two-man sniper team were up on a tour and an Argentinian patrol passed them within 15 metres. All right, they managed to stay concealed, watch the enemy, and then they managed to call in direct mortar fire, neutralising that enemy. Get your kit cammed out, to get your helmet cammed out. The art of not being seen is vital to the frontline commando. This is something the recruits will have to master if they're ever to infiltrate and survive behind enemy lines. It tastes not too bad. Man. No, mate, you can't make me eat that. That's chemical <laughs> shit. Five! Four! They have to do everything against the clock, otherwise they get a beasting, the name Marines give to a little gentle persuasion. Get fucking down! I give you this time so you can make the best use of it and start learning! But instead, you lot like doing press-ups. And um, bend, stretch. Not right, in the field, when we tell you to do something, you do it like fucking grease weasel shit. You go so fast, you can see your shadow behind you. Five in your own time, go on. You will now get in position and be in there five seconds. Go, five! Three sections! Right, lads, now start looking at your partner. Hasn't broke out the outline of his helmet. Yep, big panda eyes. Yeah, everyone see that? When you put sticks in, things like that, make sure that the uh, the roots or the ends of the sticks are facing downwards, not facing upwards, all right? Because that looks unnatural, doesn't it? Right, I'm going to give you two minutes, all right, to go down where you're going to go and hide now. It's a bit of hide and seek, other than this is a bit fucking more deadlier, isn't it? You've got to see us, but we're not supposed to see you. Are you happy? Right, lads, you've got two minutes. Go! Make sure you can see me! Hey, make sure you can see on the top. Right then, lads. Turn around. Go on. Hey, so who's close? see two of them just straight. If you go straight on, there's like a purple patch and like a tree sticking up. Should be there, H. There it goes. No. Two rubs left. Yep, just there. Everyone see him now? Right, that fucking cam of yours is shit on your helmet, right? And there's a big fucking line there. Right then. Those of you out hiding, stand up. Stand up. At least half the recruits who hide are not spotted. Impressed with that, lads? Yes, Carver. Impressed with that? My God. Right then, lads, good effort, you lot. Down there, we didn't get pinged. Right to the top of the hill now. Go! Up here! But some, whilst they could not be seen, were so well hidden, so immersed in vegetation, that they could see nothing from their position. Not the commando way. What did I say? The art of camouflage and concealment is to see without being seen and to kill without being killed. I think a few of you have forgotten what you're here to do, all right? Trying to train you to become raw marine commandos so we can leave you in a position and you cover the ground and make sure any enemy come along and you can kill them. If you can't see them, they're just going to walk straight past, aren't they? I may as well not bother teaching you some things. Hurry up! Don't be last! If you get it wrong in training, you can end up on what's called the flank. That means being punished with extra duties, extra cleaning, or extra physical exercise. Everyone! Round the tree! tree. Round the tree! 
I think something grasped the idea of it and the fact that mm. if you do hide, you can't be seen. I'm happy with that. It was a good effort. They told us we go into Afghan to do this exact thing in a couple of months. Do you want me to do the and then the cover was like, it may or may not save your life. I'm like, okay, so I might die if I don't do it right. So just don't muck up and you won't die. <laughs> Did you tie the other one, mate? Tie the other one. Oh, for fuck, you said tie my boot. Uh, please, mate. Ah, ah, they have prickles all over my socks, mate. Ah, <laughs> take your time, mate. 5 a.m. the following morning. Ma, fucking hell. That is cold. I love getting in the field when it's freezing cold and putting cold water on me testicles. As a punishment for their slackness the previous day, 924 Troop have an extra kit inspection, and they're told if anyone fails, they will all have to pay the price. Hold on, Ned. Nervous. Don't want to get on the flank. Just uh, been scrubbing for about the last hour on our new weapon, but I'm sure he'll find something. He did yesterday, so let's just see what happens. I've put 110 percent into that. My weapon's like well oiled. I only, was only on the flank yesterday because a tiny bit of orange rust, but you can't, you couldn't even see in that light down there, you know? Just beginning to come through, that real tight, like orange tint. And um, I failed on watermarks in my mess, like when you boil it, it goes a bit darker. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to scrub it out is a nightmare. Four, three, hurry up. Still. I don't understand Collins about fucking standing still. Yeah, sorry, you get behind your kit. What don't you understand about that? You said that you're not on sergeant in your way. Don't fucking backchat me, son. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Right, I told you. Fucking stand still, get behind your kit. So here he is. Alright, do not fucking backchat me. Do you understand? Yes, sir. You'll we'll find a big pond at the bottom, go submerge yourself in it. Yes, sir. Stand still. Start thinking, fellas, for yourselves. You're in week five, going on to week six of training. All we ask is a little bit of intelligence, yeah, and you start thinking for yourself, because at the moment, you're not. Do you understand? Yes, Sergeant. Yes, Sergeant. Do you understand? Yes, yes Sergeant. Sergeant. <clears throat> if you're standing to attention, you do not move. To do so is a cardinal sin. So even before the inspection, the entire troop, once again, has to pay for the sins of a few. Get in it! Roll over! Right in it, not just on the outside. Stop standing around in the shallow bit, get in the deep bit, get some bollocks about you. No, the back of your trousers is still dry. I told you to roll over. Get yourself back in again. You can go over. You can go over there. You can go over there. Make your way back. Right, fellas, pick up the gas parts. Check it's free from carbon and not rusty. Okay, if there's too much carbon on these, then the gas cannot travel freely through it, and it will not cock your weapon. It will cause you stoppages. A stoppage means if an enemy is shooting at you, you cannot shoot back at him. He will get the better of you, and he will kill you. Well, sure, that is taking the fucking piss, isn't it? Cool. That's not even benefit of the doubt material. You've got camera cream on your face, your boots are honking, your turnout's filthy. And your jackets are done. All right, you've lost your elastics, you just look like a bag of shit. Have you no pride or nothing? Those trousers are now wet. Those trousers are now wet. Where's your other dry trousers? I've got no You don't them. have them, exactly. It's one of the worst fucking turnouts I've ever seen, yeah? If you're a complete bag of shit, then fucking leave, yeah? Simple as that. Absolutely terrible. I don't understand how quickly that they're going to be at a unit and friends of mine are going to be looking at them and knowing that I've passed them out. And that's, that's my biggest loyalty. I don't care about all the officers and all that. I don't care about how many Marines I'm giving them. I don't want one of these turning up and one of my mates saying, God, you're abysmal. Who's passed you out of training? And the last thing I want them to say is my name. This is what we're talking about, fellas, right? We can't run until we can walk, and at the moment, the right, majority of you people standing here can't even crawl. You haven't even been in the field one day. We've got eight people, fellas, out of a troop of 39, 
yet able to manage and administrate themselves after one day in the field. One fucking day. If you don't start producing the goose now, fellas, all right, you'll find yourself being flanked in the mornings and you will get extra tuition. <laughs> yes, sir, sir. <laughs> Is there a general realisation that they'll have to go to Afghanistan, some of them? I don't think there is. I don't it? think there is. They still think they're just going for a couple of days and would be coming. You know, they think, oh, we're going home tomorrow, so like the lad this morning who just put all his wet kit back on. Well, hold on a minute. Afghanistan, winter time when we get there, up in the hills, might be raining, might be snowing. If he thinks he's going home tomorrow and they get retasked and he's got all, all his kit, he hasn't filled up his water bottle, he's going to be useless to people. That's the thing, they need to start taking responsibility for what they're doing, I think. I mean, they're supposed to be lads that are pretty much self-sufficient. If I say turn up here and they have to go and beg, borrow or steal water and they turn up here on time, that's all I'm worried about. I'm not worried about how they do it. It's going to obviously break the law or piss anyone off too much, but in a minute, they have to be told to do absolutely everything. In the minute, there's no taking the onus onto themselves, being Just responsible. Think, they? they're, Just, they're not thinking, am I deployable? They're thinking, well, I'll get there and hopefully the training team might notice. The government is facing calls to reinforce the British military in southern Afghanistan after two more soldiers were killed in action. The Ministry of Defence has said a British soldier serving with NATO in Afghanistan has been killed during fighting with Taliban forces. First five, stand by. Go! Yeah, you're fucking number five, aren't you? There's only four there. Go! Five of you! Send Paul details! Go! The recruits are punished for a poor kit inspection that itself was a punishment for poor camouflage. For some reason, they're not working well, individually or as a team. I don't know what it is, it's just... Whether it's just me or the troop, there's no motivation whatsoever, no motivation. We're the ones going straight out to Afghanistan. I mean, if we're not learning all this now, then we'll be fucked, won't we? What's morale like? Shit this morning, really bad this morning. Yeah. It's just... I don't know, no one can be asked. No one can be asked. People have got injuries. Everyone's hot and sweaty and wet. It's nothing, it's just... See what it's all sore there? Yeah. That's it, it's just rubbing on my love handle. Well, it's that webbing rash. Yeah. It's hot. Really hot. I'm not a great lover of the heat. I don't mind if I'm sitting down on a beach with a nice cold drink, but running about in body armour, webbing, weapon, the work, it's quite horrible. Sit down, Mel. You only give us if you let yourself. Your body will go on forever. Up there, come on! Come on, Mel. Up there, come on. Up there, come on. Up there, come on. Up there, come on. Nothing you seem to do is right. We're still not, we're still not working as a team or a troop, even in our sections, though. Where's me, buddy? That's right, yeah. Right, something's got to happen, something's got to click. No, we're doing it. Sometimes you get like a bit of a reality check that this is, this is for real, and if we don't get this down and start doing it properly, uh, you know, we're going to end up in a bit of trouble. It's just, it's pretty mad. It's pretty mad to think that, you know, what we're doing right now is actually going to prepare us for what we're going to be facing at the end of it, and that's kind of scary. Hey, come on! They're listening, men. Tell you to take cover, for instance, you do it as quick as you can. Because later on in your career, it might mean because your life depends on it. If it's not your life, it may be one of your oppos. Look round now, everyone stood next to you. It might be <coughs> one of them whose fucking life might depend on it. If you do not move fast enough, they might die. Do you understand? Yes, sir! Yeah. <laughs> the standards of the Green Beret are that we will never give up whatever we do. Cold, wet, crawling through mud in the middle of nowhere. We will go on. We will have unrelenting pursuit of excellence when we do this and unbelievable determination. Never give up in anything you do. Bit of mud, bit of cold, bit of water. It's all character building, fellas. It will make you better men if it does not break you. You will be, by the end of recruit training, unbreakable. We can thrash you as hard as we like, and as a troop, nothing can break you. That is what we are trying to do. I used to be a winner. Stand by. Go!
the recruits are beginning to learn what being a Royal Marine Commando is all about. And for some, it's proving a challenge too far. Not bothering to go again then, Holmes. Not bothering. I'm thinking that you've chosen to wrap. You're not injured? No, sir. Fuck off then. No report to San Quinn. Tell me you want to leave. While some recruits falter, the others must plough on regardless. Next, advancing into enemy territory. Lesson one, getting through barbed wire. You can see, fellas, it's quite a slow process. Hey, you got something handy, a Clark scaling ladder, a plank, even a log, throwing it on top. That would then flatten it and you can run across. There's two ways of crossing this razor wire. Nice, slow, trolling pace, and there's also the assault method. Thank you for volunteering for demo men. See, I'm feeling kind to you. You might want to put that around your balls. Seriously, Aerosmith, put that around your balls. Stuntman, he's going to do the breaching. Stuntman runs forward, dives onto that bit. Dive to the ground. Dive to the ground. Okay, number four steps on stuntman. Next person comes through. Cheers, man. Okay, now it's time for extracting him. On the count of three, they lift up. Right, you will do a forward roll. Stand by, one, two, three, lift. Okay, and then you. It's never enough to watch and learn. Everyone has to have a go. Lay on it. You're not actually covering the gap, are you? Come on, lads, need Come someone else. My, my mother must be home doing some washing and some cooking, I must be saying, I wonder where's Terry, but she never know where I'm. I mean, bushes getting pricked and all that. I know she wants me to hang in there. I know that, for sure. She tells me that she prays for me every night and all that. So. Yeah, I pray for everybody. I pray for all those couples that be mean to us sometimes. So how's your morale, James? Mine's always up. I can only talk from my point of view. I'm not going to give in on that. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I don't want to leave. No way. No way. I think she's breaking a lot of people. I think some people are going. <laughs> Situation. You're in the middle of Afghanistan. There are approximately 45 Taliban fighters to your front. Move! I was thinking yeah, I'm going to have to go and probably kill people and all that. I was really considering it, mate. I was really... Um, I was like, tell me, God, tell me if you want me to do this. Tell me if this is right for me. I don't know, I'm just letting God guide me. It's not for me, it's not for me. Hey, let me front. Hey, let me front. Okay, down. Take cover. Accurate rounds, two accurate rounds. Okay, enemy dead. Okay, good effort. Good effort up front. Yeah, stacks of aggression, get in there. Get going. Okay, started off patrolling well. Okay, what you want, keep that weapon, that barrel. Point in the same place as your face. Yes, Corporal. Okay, so when, when you see that target, it's straight there. Happy? Yes, Corporal. Any comebacks? I'm all right, Corporal. Huh? Enjoy that? Yes, Corporal. It's fun, isn't it? Yes, Corporal. Love, right, love, right, love. Terry Stark giving us a lecture on uh, the uh, downsides of war earlier. You're just getting me quite worried. <laughs> I don't want to die. Well, you can't think of it in that way if you have to do it, but then you have to also think of it because it is, there's a possibility of it. That's why we're going to send you up first. We'll say, Terry. Terry, the black man in front. You go and take that. You put the black man in front. There's no cowardism in this. In the in wars, you get put in jail. Wait, wait till the war Terry. You know you could die by going to war before joining up. I can't wait. <laughs> can't wait to die. No, I can't wait to go to war. Wait, I tell you, there's something absolutely wrong with you. I've got because it's my job, but you want to go because oh my. 
Go to the war. 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 Oh, Jesus, mate, come on! <laughs> the next morning, spirits are surprisingly high. You have ten seconds to be falling in three ranks as you are in the tank facing me. Go! But there's a very good reason for this heightened morale. The fact is, today's the start of a three-week summer break and everyone's going home. <laughs> Lieutenant Rodder's only concern is how many? We'll come back. The summer break over, and amazingly, all the recruits of 924 Troop have returned to the commando training camp at Limpston. But many are suffering what's called the Limpston Blues. Most people are back. Yeah, Limpston Blues, and you see the, the fence of Limpston, and you see the gates appearing, you just want to run away from it. But... They're only, they're only um, well, eight weeks in as well, so that's quite a bit, a bit of a difference. They haven't been here in you know, full 20 weeks. It's not as if they can see the end yet. It's still early days. Probably a few of them are trying to want to resign this week, but now I probably won't let them resign this week just because it's the first week back and they'll get over it. Mm. Um, so, yeah, I wouldn't, wouldn't be surprised at all if one or two wanted to resign this week and they'll just say no. Wow, you really don't want to be back. You don't. You really don't. No. It's just Limston Blues, isn't it? I don't know. I think it's worse than that. I walked back in and I just thought, I can't do this. Another four months until I'm back home. You sort of stated me earlier. Oh, this boy, me and him, we're going to chuck ourselves off the building early. Oh, yeah, we were feeling really bad, but now you know time is. It's grew a bit, and it's all right now. I sorted myself out, and I found out he wants to leave. Honestly, I know it'd be hard, but I want to. Honestly. You want to leave? Yeah. Because he's a fussy old. No, he's mad. I've written a letter to say that. I've already found it. Who have you oh, written yeah. to? I've written it to, I just, I just said to like, well, sir. Dear sir, this is PO64955 recruiting John. I don't want to continue with my training because I am not mentally able to handle this type of life here. I'm deeply sorry. Yours respectfully, recruit John of my troop. This is just the easy way out, mate. I'm fucking, I'm livid now, mate. I really am. I want to be fucking sick. I want to cry. I do. I really do. But I won't. I'm too proud, you know what I mean? Don't give that in for a lot until after Jim passed out. See how he feels. Oh, I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's cool to be back. Crack on. So that's why everybody's hating you at the moment, is it? I <laughs> know, oh, it's really weird. I feel like I'm doing something wrong. You know, I feel like I shouldn't be feeling like Something's that. wrong with him, <laughs> definitely. I was actually laying down and dread Sergeant Quinn coming in. Oh. 9 2 4 on the landing, all those stuff on your know. own. I can't wait to see him. I just go mental, I can't wait to see him. I'll be, like, I'll be standing on the landing like that when he starts shouting. <laughs> I'm home. <hiding. laughs> yeah, I don't think you should go. Fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Picture that, lads. Our boys. That's what you know what I mean? This was an amazing show of true British grit and heroic against all the odds. Our Marines showed why they are the best in the world. That's what I'm talking about. Prove something. Prove something about the training. <laughs> Our Marines showed why they are the best in the world. Yes. No one could ever explain to you how hard it is or how yeah. it's going to be. No one could ever. Yeah, no book. You can't, you can't go and write it in a book how hard it's going to be. You know, if you really want your dream Benny, if you want to pass out commander training, then banning injury or illness, nothing will stop you. He says, because actually it's in here. And that's where the real battle takes place. So we can actually, we can, we can make the physical side of it work and then turn out guys who are physically fit and robust and determined. But it's the bit in here that is the, the mental. Which is literally the, the... Honestly, my head is on fire, yeah. honestly. I would not lie to you, my head is like mm -hmm. it's splitting open. I, I'm, I'm thinking, honestly. I'm honestly thinking of everything right now in my life, every aspect of my life, honestly. I'm at that point where I'm thinking about every, every, everything. Mm -hmm. Considering it. What if I get my Queen Mary? Yes. 
go into action, get injured severely, come back out. What am I to do with myself? And I haven't even done. Wait, wait. wait. And the chances of you being knocked down and injured or killed in Exmouth High Street are much, much more than they are of you being injured or killed in the battlefield. That's just that's just maths. You know, you can't live your life thinking what if all the time. That's the truth. I mean, I'm more likely to be killed than a wee bike from this office to my house. It's the end of week eight of training. Just 24 to go now before deployment to Afghanistan. And for the moment, Terry has battled through his doubts and fears and not handed his letter in to serve. Along with everybody else, he's now graduated to live firing on the ranges at a virtual enemy. Everyone must now become proficient at firing in the prone, kneeling and standing positions up to 300 metres. I love guns, mate. I wish we'd black enough ragged. Mate, it's not like that, mate. I don't think I'm ready to, like... I'd kill someone coming at me with a gun. If you running down there and you coming... I'd freaking kill you. But if, like, I'm on patrol and, like, the enemy is over there, yes? I'm not going to just freaking get them, bam, bliss them. No, I don't... <laughs> you would. You freaking guys are mean, mate. Mean? No, if, if you joined there for Yeah, do that, I, OK, I would, mate. If I was commanded to. Anything in the area, take out, I would do that. Freaking them, man. It's my orders. I'd go by my orders. Do you ever worry about killing? Part of the job. Don't really think about it. It's either you or them, isn't it? And uh, they're pretty hell-bent on taking us out from what you hear, so nah, it's just part of the job. Don't think of it as, oh, killing someone. It's what we joined up to do. Joined up to be a Roman commando, joined up to go to war, joined up to be part of the best fighting force in the world, you know? What is missing off your person? Your fucking weapon! Crawl for it, you little shit! Get your ass down! Get your ass down! It's simple, you reggae. The right place, the right time, with the right kit. Hurry up! Lane three, get your knees up! Get up! Spread to that weapon! Turning the recruits of 924 Troop into fighting Marines is not proving that easy for the training team. So, from now on, they've decided that they're going to give the recruits a choice. We've got to use the carrot and stick method with the recruits. Either donkey, come here, I'll give you a carrot, and if you don't come here, I'll beat you to death with a fucking stick. So, we've made the recruits make this, and they have to carry it around with them wherever they go. And at any point, we can ask them whether they'd like us to be nice to them or whether they'd just like us to thrash them. They do prefer the stick. the stick. They do prefer being thrashed. And any of them got their CBA on? No, no, no. Right, McCann's the only one who's fucking hard. The men of 924 Troop, reeling from a hard day of stick and very little carrot, are praying that the worst is over. But then the training team find out that only one person is wearing the all-important combat body armour. So what you just thought, I know I won't wear my combat body armour. It's too fucking warm. They love stick. Yeah. Just like I said. We could have had it easy. We could have been doing the 400 metre shoot then. <coughs> but they just love stick. Only one lad out of, what, 30? Yeah. Actually has paid attention and just cracks on with his body armour on. Hell is about to be unleashed. Fellas, we've gone back to the fucking carrot and the stick. Right? We are fucking busy enough as a training team making sure that you get the fucking required shoots and the relevant ticks in the boxes. Hurry up. If you think you've got the fucking Get attitude to sit back here and do your own fucking routine, you can think again. I'm bent and straight. You've come in here, fellas, to the range all last week and this fucking week. You know the routine, you know what's required on the fucking range. It won't stop a round on its own, but fragmentation, should there be some accident or a ricochet, you know, it will stop. But not only that, if you get shot, it keeps your insides in. You know, so... You only have a small, you should have a small round in the front of you and a small round in the back of you, apparently, so they say. Um, so it's a safety bit of kit, it's there for a reason. If it wasn't there for a reason, then we wouldn't issue it, as simple as that. When I say fucking go, you move at the fucking speed of your legs, we'll fucking carry you into one straight line 
McPherson, Corporal Glanfield, he was at your fucking rear. You understand? Yes, Sergeant! Go! Yes, Sergeant! Gas, gas, gas! Gas, gas, gas! gas, gas. Three! Gas, gas, gas! Turn! Get your helmet on! Oh, quickly! Yeah. Number one, move! Down. Running with a gas mask on is the ultimate stick. Breathing is almost impossible. Get up there! The training team hope that this beasting will persuade the recruits never to forget their CBA again. Fucking your fucking respirators Some... off your face so you can breathe easily. Do you think if there was gas all over this fucking area, you would be pulling your mask off your face? You wouldn't do it then. You certainly wouldn't fucking do it now. Go five, number two, move! <laughs> okay, stop! You <laughs> say go with your respirators off. Three ranks, face to me. You have 15 seconds. Any questions? <laughs> go! <laughs> It seems to be the only way they remember what they should be doing. Uh, it's, it's frustrating because you think that you're just bonding with the troop and everybody's moving in the right direction and then they just do something so silly like this and it just gets you down. See, a bollocking you know, only makes you weaker or stronger, makes you disobey more or obey more. Right now, we deserve that, we should have known. But no one was paying attention to it, so I, I, I take it. That's a bollocking well deserved. Should have known we fight in live rounds, could have died, I don't know. 924 troops seem to be going from bad to worse, and yet now the recruits face the biggest challenge of their training so far. It's the end of week nine, and the recruits face a rigorous test of their fitness in what's called gym pass out. Only those who get through it will be allowed to start on the gruelling outside assault courses. Anyone who fails will be transferred to a more junior troop for remedial training. Terry John passes all the tests, but eight other recruits fail. Jordan Slatter passes everything except the ropes, so must now leave 924 troop and all his friends. Right then, Slatter. Uh, you failed the rope climb yesterday, didn't you? Yeah, that's right. You're going to go back two weeks, and I have no doubt about it that you will stay with that troop and pass out with that troop. All right. But unfortunately, you've let me you've let me down this week. All right. I've lost three good members this, of my section this week. All right. You've let me down. You've let yourself down. Don't lose sight of your goal. And your goal is a Green Beret at the end of the day, isn't it? It wasn't to pass out with 924 Troop, it was to earn your Green Beret. All right, don't let it break you. Don't let it break you. All right, good effort. What a shit, that. Missed the rope by that, that much, but never had a problem with them before. Could go up and down them all day long, usually, but just today weren't my day. Do you know what makes it worse? It's a fucking beautiful day outside and I've got sitting here. Oh dear. When I think of the true reason why we're here, to become Royal Marines, and no one said this is going to be easy and all that, and everything is hard. Yeah. Just do it and get done with it. Just, as they say, crack on. Nothing comes easy, you just got to do it sometimes. Oh. Oh. You know, you can jump that far and beat Smith. Best way to do this is fast. Oh, at the end of every like exercise we do, at the end of it, I guarantee you, you get stronger physically and mentally every time you, you do something. Terry John, who has been battling his conscience and his fears, is now flying high again and remains one of the dwindling originals of 924 Troop. Now, who have we lost? Porter, Smith, Jay. But I'm actually really delaying rubbing out Slatter because he was a good lad. Oh, I don't know. At the minute, Mum. It was a one-off with him, and I don't think any of us saw it coming. He's gone now. He's out of my memory. Don't worry. 
Slatter's gone. I've forgotten about him. Oh, mother. How many originals? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seven, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, two, one, two, three, twenty-four. So we've lost half originals already, and it's only week nine. So we've got another ooh, twenty-three weeks to go. Never mind. Right, yeah. Yeah. I'll be alright. <laughs> Jordan Slatter is eventually diagnosed with a back injury and medically discharged. His boyhood dream of being a Royal Marine Commando is over. He is now retraining to be a plumber. Next time on Commando, 924 Troop head for the wilds of Dartmoor for a survival exercise. Twelve recruits get lost and a search party is launched. 924 Troop! And the rookie commandos get to kill for the first time.